Hi, I'm Lisa Weiland with Wabash Valley Astronomical Society. This video is about refractor telescopes. We'll assume that you've already watched the telescope fair overview and accessories videos for prerequisite information and terminology we'll be using. If you watched our telescope fair overview video, you'll remember that refractor telescopes use lenses to focus incoming light. One way to focus light is by using lenses to bend or refract light into a cone. Faint light becomes more concentrated and brighter toward the narrow end of the cone where it comes into focus. In a telescope, the distance between the objective lens, that's the one closest to the front of the scope, and the focal point, this point where the cone of light through the lens comes to a focus point, is called the telescope's focal length. The telescope manufacturer provides the focal length as well as the diameter, or aperture, of the objective lens. Our accessories video describes how to determine the magnification, or power, when the telescope is used with a particular eyepiece. The way a typical refractor telescope works can be shown by looking at the path taken through it by incoming light. First, Let's remove the tube itself so we can look inside to see the telescope's principal parts. A simple refractor telescope only needs two components, an objective lens and an eyepiece. Here we also show a diagonal mirror which is used for more comfortable viewing. Let's follow incoming light as it passes through the telescope. Light enters through the front that's the right side in this diagram, until it reaches the objective lens. The objective lens forms the light beam into a narrowing cone. The light is then reflected off the diagonal mirror and comes to a focus just before entering the eyepiece, forming an image of the distant object. The eyepiece then magnifies the image before the compressed light enters the pupil of your eye. Light passing through a refractor lens is bent to reach a focus point at the back of the telescope, but each wavelength of light is bent by a slightly different amount, so red, green, and blue wavelengths don't necessarily focus at the exact same position. This can give an image false color, known as chromatic aberration. To minimize this problem, quality refractors have at least a pair of, or better still, three lenses working together to change the focus of some wavelengths of light. Refractor telescopes come in two classes, achromatics, or achromats, and apochromatics, or apos. Traditional design achromats use a pair of lenses, one of crown glass and one of flint glass, or a doublet, that's what it's called, to get red and blue wavelengths of light to come to a focus in the same place. However, green still focuses at a different spot, and the human eye is more sensitive to green, so an image looks focused to your eye when the green wavelengths are focused. This leaves both ends of the spectrum, red and blue, out of focus, causing a purple fringing of chromatic aberration in an image, so these telescopes do suffer from a bit of chromatic aberration. More recent design achromats try to focus the red and green colors to the same point, sacrificing the blue part of the spectrum. This makes the blue and violet end of the spectrum very much out of focus, so a broad blue haze will surround the focused image. However, with little energy in this part of the spectrum, this in fact isn't necessarily very obvious visually, so an almost apple-like visual image can result. Apochromats use a set of three lenses, or a triplet, to bring red, blue, and green wavelengths of light to a focus at the same point. The rest of the colors focus at or close to this point as well, depending on the materials used for the lenses. There are also semi-apochromats that use a doublet with one element made of an exotic glass having very low dispersion. This is called ED, for extra-low dispersion glass. 
These materials can correct for chromatic aberration almost as well as a triplet, so these telescopes are classed as APOs. Some of these specialty glasses are hard to work with and expensive to make. That's why, after perfect grinding, polishing, coating, and fitting these lenses, some APO telescopes can cost $1,000 or more per inch of aperture. This is not the sort of telescope you buy for your eight-year-old. Most small, low-cost refractors aimed at beginners will have just a single lens or use a doublet of the old crown and flint glass design that brings the red and blue to a focus. The single lens scope or an acromat with a doublet of the old design will have some chromatic aberration. However, if the focal ratio of the scope is long enough, f10 to f16, the effect is minimized. Minimal chromatic aberration isn't so much of an issue for visual observing. This purpling at the edge can be ignored by the brain, so it's not necessarily a deal breaker just for visual observing. But with modern astrophotography, chromatic aberration becomes a big issue. Good quality apochromatic refractor telescopes generally give sharp, high contrast images of bright objects like solar system objects like the moon and planets. But as we've noted, these larger aperture refractors can be quite expensive due to the precise grinding, polishing, fitting, and coating with anti-reflective coatings of expensive specialty glasses. We would recommend these telescopes to people who already have experience in the hobby. For beginners who prefer refractors, we would recommend refractors with an aperture of at least 60 millimeters, that's two and a half inches, preferably a little larger, 80 millimeters, or three inches. If you're buying for a child whose interest in astronomy as a hobby is uncertain, you may want to consider binoculars instead. Binoculars are a pair of small refractor telescopes attached in the middle. They can be a better choice with kids because they're very portable and can also be used for sporting and other outdoor events and other hobbies like bird watching. So if the kid decides he or she just isn't that interested in astronomy, the binoculars can be used for other purposes. Binocular size is always given by two numbers with an X between them. The X actually goes with the first number. In this case, 8x for 8 times. This means that these binoculars magnify their view by 8 times. The second number, in this case 42, refers to the diameter of the lenses at the front of the instrument. In this example, the objective lens of each little refractor in this binocular pair has a diameter of 42 millimeters across. <coughs> The problem with binoculars is that they have a fixed level of magnification. This pair magnifies things by eight times. Other popular magnification sizes are six, seven, and ten times. With binoculars of these sizes, you can still see many star clusters and some nebulae just fine. You can also look at the moon and the planets with them. However, if you're expecting to see Saturn's rings, you'll be disappointed. To see those, you need at least 25 times magnification. There are large binoculars that magnify more. This pair of 144 by 80s magnifies 144 times. But the increased size means increased weight. To use binoculars like these, you'd need to purchase a good sturdy tripod to put them on and a mounting bracket to attach the binoculars to the tripod. Large binoculars are, of course, more expensive too, and the eyepieces on them may not come close together enough for the viewer's eyes. You can get binoculars with changeable eyepieces, but these arrangements, again, are very expensive, require a tripod, and require purchasing two of any eyepiece you might want to put in. But one 
there will be limits as to what eyepieces could be used, and two, eyepieces are expensive enough individually, let alone in pairs. If you decide to go with binoculars, be aware that to hold them steady, you will need to rest your arms on something while holding them, or get a tripod. As a tip, a vinyl beanbag chair that can be taken outside is great for binocular astronomy because you can lay back and look at the sky and easily rest your arms on the part of the chair that billows up around you. A good refractor telescope can give a lifetime of enjoyment, observing many fascinating objects in the sky. If you have additional questions about telescopes or anything related to space and astronomy, please contact us through our website or by email.